So, welcome along to another Sonic Academy tutorial from myself, Kirk B. Georgia. And this was particularly inspired by some of the feedback I got to a previous tutorial I did when I made an IDM track, or Intelligent Techno if you prefer. And to come up with the chord progression in that track, I used a plugin called Scalar. Now, Scalar has been updated, and it's quite a big update. It's now called Scalar 2. So that's what this tutorial is all about. I'm going to show you how to use Scalar 2. Now, I'm going to approach it from a non-musician's point of view, and that is because I do not want people to get intimidated by musical theory. I mean, that's the whole point of these plugins. If you know your musical theory, although you can still get a lot out of Scalar 2 type plugins and it can certainly save you a lot of time. Scalar 2 is really great for non-musicians who haven't got any or maybe have a little musical theory and they either want to learn more through using a plugin like Scalar 2 or they don't want to know anything about music theory. They just want to get some nice chord progressions, maybe experiment and come up with something more complex than they normally would without using such a plugin. So without further ado, let's get into this. Scalar is made by Plugin Boutique. So there you'll see in my audio units folder, I have the original Scalar 1, which we don't need, Scalar 2, and then something called Scalar Audio 2, which I'm not going to cover right now. I'm just going to cover the regular Scalar 2 plugin. And it's quite simple. You simply drag in an instance and it creates a MIDI instrument or a channel in Ableton. Just save some time loading it up. Pre done that so we can close our menu, give us a bit more space here. Um, on this channel, if you're wondering, I've just got um, an instance of Electric Piano Electric 88 from Waves. Um, so we can use that to demonstrate some of the chord progressions and add some more music as we go through the tutorial. Right, so you'll see here it's a very nice and clean GUI and we're going to start at the very top left hand side usual thing we have our icon and this contains the credits and the link to a help PDF uh, your registration uh, details and all the legal stuff so that's the usual thing that you get when you click on a certain plugins icon it's no different here with Scalar 2. Now, directly beneath the Scalar icon, we have two small buttons here. You can see one is a keyboard and the other is a guitar. And you can see when I switch between them, this display here changes from your regular keyboard layout to something very different. Now, I'm not a guitarist, but guitarists will know that these are frets on a guitar. And if you prefer to use guitar, uh, sounds and if you're more familiar with the guitar fretboard type of visualization of chords then by all means you can switch between the two I'm more used to a keyboard so I'm just going to keep it on keyboard mode just to say with this guitar you have an extra drop down menu here and you can see you can change the view to different types of custom views this will mean a lot to guitarists I'm sure um, but as I said, I'm just going to use the keyboard one. So um, do go through these if you're going to use the guitar mode, but I'm not going to go through them during this tutorial. So I switch back to keyboard mode and you'll see underneath keyboard and the guitar modes here, we have another drop down menu. And this is for the internal sounds of Scalar 2. Now it's important to point out here that Scalar 2, you can root it uh, in Ableton to play other instruments. But Scalar does have this kind of speedy way of working where you can select your own internal sounds. And this is very self-explanatory. So if we go to Digital Piano, you can see if I click on here or if I play on my keyboard. Okay, and if I am using the display keyboard, you'll see here under keyboard, we have these two little arrows and that means you can extend them. So we're up to C5 here, but if we click that, we can go up to C6. But if you're using a keyboard, 
Perhaps you just use these buttons if you want to see them visualized. Okay. So, of course, what you would then do is maybe choose one of these preset sounds that most suits your genre. So we can use a nice the Detroit. It's a kind of stabby sound. Some nice basic strings. Of course, they're not that realistic, but the idea is that you maybe load up your sample library with your realistic uh, orchestral sounds and you then root scalar to that and you fine tune everything. So that is your drop down menu for the sounds for this tutorial. Just this section, I'm going to use a nice sort of soft sound for me to talk over. So we've got a nice felt piano, it's nice and atmospheric. And I'm going to go along to this part of the GUI and this section is called the status bar because it gives you a, a kind of live update. It gives you feedback as to what you're actually inputting into Scalar. First of all, I will mention these two little buttons before then. You can see MIDI with an exclamation mark and that is our trusty MIDI panic button. Um, if you're familiar with playing with MIDI, you sometimes get overlapping notes or double triggers. Something goes a bit haywire. So if you play that and then hit that, MIDI panic, it will stop the MIDI notes and get you out of jail. And this second button here will become important later on, as well as recognizing input MIDI notes and telling you what uh, notes and chords you're playing. Scalar also has an audio detect mode and you can see there audio detection on and it's a toggle button. So you can see here we've put that off or if it's on those off Indicators turn into little dashes there, but let's leave audio detect off for now. We're just going to stick with the MIDI input features of Scalar. Okay, so let's try this. Again, it's very simple. I'm just going to play a very uh, simple three note chord here. I'm going to uh, stagger it, so I'm going to play it one note at a time. You see E displayed, G. And then B, and that's your simple E minor chord there. If you play something a bit more complex, play this all at once. You can see there E, G, A, and C, and it has recognized that chord as C major add 13. Now, as I said, we're going to do this from a complete novice's point of view when it comes to musical theory, so I am not going to explain how Scalar comes up with its various chord definitions. I'm sure it has very complex algorithms, um, but true musicians <laughs> amongst you out there might think, oh, why is it giving you that definition? It, it could be this chord instead. Well, that's for you to explore. As I said, I'm not going to get bogged down in musical theory. I'm just going to highlight the features within Scalar 2 that will enable non-musical theorists and uh, non-musicians like myself to get the most out of a plugin like this. OK, so I'm not going to worry too much about why that chord was given that particular definition as opposed to another one. I, I do notice that sometimes it gives out definitions that I wouldn't particularly know much about like slash chords there so uh, anyway as I said we're going to leave that off for now right so that takes care of that window and as I said we call that the status bar okay so we move on over to the right hand side panel here and we call that the live settings panel and some of these will make more sense once we actually start choosing scales or recognizing various chord inputs. But for now, I'm just going to go around the GUI and show you where all these basic things are located. So this is the performance section here, and uh, they are whited and grayed out at the moment because none of them are active. If I click on perform, you'll see a uh, very nice indicator. It flashes blue, which means the performance parameters are now active. And you'll see here these submenus now become visible. And this one here is called Expressions. And if we click on that, it becomes a little drop down menu and we can choose between Expressions, Arpeggio and Strumming. OK, so what does all that mean? Well, if I was to play a simple chord now. OK, it's not just giving me a block chord as 
if I turn this off and then take my fingers off the keys, you'll see here it's just, just playing a block chord. Now it's adding some expression to the chord. Now, what's the purpose of this from a creative point of view? You're thinking, well, you know, I don't want a plugin to create notes for me. You know, I don't want that in my track because everyone will know I got that particular expression performance from Scalar 2 or whatever. Well, I would say yes, I would agree with that and I wouldn't use them in my finished track, certainly. But what they can do is while you're working out your chord progression, it can sometimes just help you with the feel um, of something that's a bit more lively than just, you know, a static chord going into another static chord. You can find an expression that suits your kind of track and then, you know, just build your chord progression using something a bit more musically pleasing. And you'll see here expressions has another drop down menu here and another drop down menu here. Now, here we have a list of performance modes adagio which of which i'm not going to go into these uh musical definitions too much just adagio i know is 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 kind of slow and espressivo you know played with expression so let's choose one of these So you can see if you need to compose a music for a trailer, for a drama piece or something, you know, and it's it's maybe a, a historical period piece. Some of these expressions will be really handy to really get you in the mood um, and come up with some really nice chord progressions like that. That one's particularly nice and it gives it a really kind of nice historical feel. Okay, you get the idea. They're, they're, they're really quite well thought out, actually. So as well as performances, we've also got some phrases. And I believe that is with love. So let's try that. Okay, that's nice. And uh, here you've got a speed button so you can double the speed. course I'm actually playing that by hand so the timing's not quite right but obviously you can uh, get it really spot on with the timing uh, when you edit stuff uh, with MIDI. Let's move on and we've got rhythms here so maybe let's uh, let's choose a volante which I believe means quite fast. Let's change, let's get this uh, a nice synth sound for this. Excellent stuff. So you can see there the expressions you have performances, phrases and rhythms. And let's go to the next choice, which is arpeggios. And you can see here the arpeggio, you get your usual choice up, down, up, down, up, down, repeat and so forth. And then you get the division of the master clock. So eighth notes here. That's nice. Let's uh, do these in uh, 16th and dotted notes. Let's choose something a little bit different here. It's uh, this one. Nice. I'm sure you can uh, find some really nice basic starting points, which you can then edit once you've dragged these MIDI parts into your DAW. I mean, that is the whole idea. And Let's just uh, quickly say that it's also got a strumming mode and here you can see alternate strumming up and down or you've got just the down strums, up strums and random and then your speed. But we'll leave that because that is more catered towards your guitar users there. OK, so that basically just takes care of the performance modes.